Hello friends, I am Dr. Katpagam Chinnamal from Chikana Garment Arts College, Thirupur. In the previous module, we have dealt with the topic natural dyes. In this module, we will deal with natural dyes with special reference to moderns, its types, methods and dyeing techniques. Natural dyes belong to one of the two classes, substantive and adjective. Substantive type does not require a mordant and adjective which includes majority of the natural dyes requires the use of a mordant to fix the color to the fiber. For substantive dyes, the use of a mordant though not a necessity is still sometimes an advantage particularly to obtain a variety of shades. So mordants are an integral part of natural dyeing. In this session, we are going to understand the need for mordants in natural dyeing, learn about the types of mordants and the methods of mordanting, get familiar with the procedure for dyeing of different fibers using natural dyes, get an insight into the fastness properties of natural dyes. What are mordants? Why is it necessary in natural dyeing? The term mordant is derived from the French modri meaning to bite. Mordant is a substance which has an affinity for both fiber and dye stuff and so is used to fix dyes on fibers. Most of the natural colorants are adjective in nature and have no substantivity on cellulose or other textile fibers. They require an intermediate to fix into the fiber and it is called a mordant. Mordant does not serve as a color source on its own. It's a substance which helps a chemical reaction to take place between a fiber and a dye. The mordants, which are usually metallic salts, form metal complex with the fiber during mordanting and during the dyeing process, it attracts the dye and creates a coordinating bond and attaches the dye firmly to the fabric. Thus, for proper fixation of natural dyes on any textile fiber, mordanting is essential in most of the cases. The scheme of reaction of mordants with dye and fiber is illustrated below. The dye with fiber forms a hydrogen bond which is weak. The dye with mordant forms an ionic bond which is strong. Mordant and fiber forms a coordinating bond which is also very strong. The scheme of reaction of mordants with dye and fiber is illustrated below. Next, we will look into the types of mordants. Mordants come from primarily two groups, plant based, especially plants high in tannins and mineral based such as alum, iron, tin, copper sulphate and chrome. In ancient times, mordants were found in nature, albumin from egg, ox blood, urine, cow dung, rotten mud, etc. was used as natural mordant. Nowadays, most dyers use mineral mordants. Different mordants give different color or shade with the same dye stuff. For example, cochineal gives crimson color with alum mordant, scarlet with tin, and purple when iron, chrome or copper is used. Mordant also improves the dye pickup and fastness of color to light and washing. Therefore, final color, their brilliance and color fastness properties are not only dependent on the dye itself but are also determined by varying. What is expected from a mordant? A good mordant should produce good color yield at low cost Physical properties of fiber or fastness properties of dyes must not be affected. It must not cause harmful effect during processing. Dyed material should be free from carcinogens. Mordants are classified into three categories, metallic, tannins and oil type. The first category is metallic salts or metallic mordants. Salts of aluminium, chromium, iron, copper and tin fall under this category. The metallic mordants may further be classified as brightening and dulling mordants. Brightening mordants include alum, chrome and tin. Alum is the most commonly used mordant. It is a naturally occurring metallic mordant available in two forms, aluminium 
potassium sulfate and aluminium ammonia sulfate. Potassium aluminium sulfate is economical, easily available and safe. It does not affect color. It improves the brightness and final color. More alum gives sticky and harsh feel to the textiles. It is usually used with cream of tartar which helps evenness and brightens slightly. Chrome, another brightening mordant is good for obtaining yellows. It is called red chromate. It is expensive. Due to the presence of heavy metals beyond certain limit, its use is limited as per the eco norms. It is light sensitive and so changes color when exposed to light. Tin brightens colors than any other mordant. It brightens especially reds, orange and yellows. It gets oxidized when exposed to air and imparts a rigid hand to the fabric making it weak. If applied above a certain concentration, it causes loss of tensile strength. The dulling modens include copper and iron. Copper also called blue vitriol is soluble in water and is easily applied. It saddens color. It gives some special shades which are otherwise difficult to obtain. It contains heavy metals. So beyond a certain limit, it is objected by the eco standard norms. Iron is one of the oldest mordants and is easily available. It is also called green vitriol and is soluble in water. It is used for darkening, browning and blackening of the colors or shades. It normally gives grey to black shades. Alum and iron are the most environmental friendly of the mineral mordants, while chrome, tin and copper are considered more toxic. Some additional chemicals used with natural dyes like cream of tartar, acetic acid and vinegar as well as the plant based mordants and tannin are also safe to use. The second category is tannins. Tannins are naturally occurring mordants. It is an astringent vegetable product found in a wide variety of plants. Tannins are high molecular weight, water soluble polyphenoic compounds having capacity of gelling under certain conditions. Tannic acid gives dark shades that is brown and grey shades. Pre-treatment with tannic acid followed by methyl salt treatment in cotton introduces additional hydroxyl and carboxyl groups in the fibers. Tannins themselves do not act as mordants but tannin methyl salt combination can act as a mordant for the natural dye. Myrobelin and gal or sumach are the commonly used mordants in dyeing of textiles. Pomegranate fruit rind is also rich in tannins. The next category is oil type. Vegetable oil or turkey red oil fall under this category. Turkey red oil as mordant is chiefly used in dyeing of deep red color from madder. Alum is insoluble in water and so has an affinity for cellulose and is easy, easily washed away from the fabric. Turkey red oil forms a complex with alum when used as a main mordant. Sulfonated oil possesses better binding capacity than the natural oils. Samples mordanted with oil mordants displays excellent fastness and color. We learnt about the types of mordants and now let's see about the various methods of mordanting. There are two processes concerned with the dyeing of vegetable colors. The first is mordanting and second is coloring. Mordanting is a treatment which prepares a material to be dyed to receive the dye. Mordanting can be accomplished in three ways. Pre-mordanting that is mordanting followed by dyeing. Simultaneous mordanting that is dyeing and mordanting done in the same bath. Post-mordanting, dyeing followed by mordanting. Pre-modernting. In this method, the material is entered into a modernting solution at room temperature and it is gradually raised to the optimized temperature, example 70 to 100 degrees centigrade. Modernting is continued for optimized time, say 45 minutes, with a material liquor ratio of 1 is to 30 and then dried. Modernted textile material is then dyed. After dyeing, the textile material is washed and soaping is carried out. In simultaneous mordanting, the material is immersed in a bath containing both mordant and dye 
and dyeing is started at optimum condition. Dyeing auxiliaries are added as required for the dyeing process. After dyeing, the textile material is washed properly and soaping is done. Advantage is, it's a single process. It's not suitable for fibers which will be damaged quickly. In postmodern thing method, the dyeing is carried out on bleached material and the dyed fabric is then treated in a bath containing the modern thing solution. The material is washed properly and soaping is carried out. Sufficient time should be allowed for the modern to thoroughly penetrate the fiber. If the modern is only superficial, the dye will be uneven, it will fade and will not be bright. Let us deal with the technique of dyeing various fibers. The main factors to be considered in natural dyeing are nature of the material to be dyed. Based on the chemical nature of the fibers, dyeing can be carried out in acidic, alkali or neutral bath. Animal proteins like wool and silk are dyed best in acidic condition and are weakened by alkali. If it is dyed in alkaline condition, it's best to end with a diluted vinegar rinse to restore a slightly acidic pH to the fibers before they dry. Plant material like cotton, flax are best in alkaline condition and are weakened by acids. If cotton is dyed in acidic condition, it's best to end with a weak washing soda bath to restore the fibers to slightly alkaline condition before they dry. Ingredients are specified in weight rather than measures. It's expressed as a ratio to fiber weight. Temperature. Different dyes work better at different temperatures. Most plant dyes benefit from being heated, but some, example madder, changes color if allowed to boil. Sappan wood also has a tendency to change color when heated for a long time. Some dyes work best at low temperatures, example safflor and indigo. For getting even dye uptake, one should move the fibers around as much as possible during dyeing. But when wool is heated and agitated, it tends to felt. So we must be gentle to avoid felting. First, let us see the techniques of dyeing cotton. The fiber must first be cleaned before natural dyeing. Desizing, scouring and hydrogen peroxide bleaching are normally followed. Natural dyeing of cotton is more difficult than silk and wool. Cotton is not very porous and will not hold the dye stuff without complicated preparation. So modern thing is very important for cotton dyeing. The usual method of preparing linen or cotton is to boil it first with an astrogen such as tannic acid or a modern high in tannins such as myrobilin, sumach or galnuts and then following with a mineral mordant. Cotton has a natural attraction for tannic acid, so once steeped in its solution, it is not easily removed by washing. Tannic acid aids the attraction of the coloring matter to the fiber and adds brilliancy to the colors. So well prepared cotton material is modernated with tannic acid solution. It is rinsed and treated in a solution of alum. Modernting carried out with material liquor ratio as 1 is to 30. The material is entered at room temperature and gradually raised to 90 degrees centigrade. Modernting is continued at this temperature for 45 minutes. After modernting, the fiber is squeezed. Dyeing is carried out as follows using standardized conditions. The wet modernted material is entered into a dye bath with concentration of 50% natural dyes on weight of the material with a material liquor ratio of 1 is to 30 at room temperature and the temperature is gradually raised up to 90 to 100 degrees centigrade and maintained for an hour. The pH is maintained at 10. Occasional stirring is done for even dyeing. It's allowed to cool and the dyed material is rinsed in cold water and soaping is done with 2 gram per liter soap solution at 60 degrees centigrade for 15 minutes followed by washing and drying. Cationic dye fixing agent may be used to improve its wash fastness. Next, let us see how protein fibers are dyed. Wool is easiest fiber to dye with natural dyes. 
resulting colors are fast to light and washing when used with proper mordant. Silk can also be dyed but we must be very careful with use of strong alkali as it can eat silk. Wool and silk absorbs mordants well and if chrome and iron are used as mordants there is no need for assistance. Alum is the mordant commonly used for animal fiber as it helps achieve clear vivid color from the dye. They are dyed through pre-mordanting or post-mordanting process. The mordant and dye concentration are determined based on the depth of shade required. In pre-mordanting, 10 to 20 percent mordant is dissolved in water maintaining material liquor ratio 1 is to 40 and temperature is raised to 30 degrees centigrade. Wet fiber is immersed in modern solution. Temperature of modern bath is raised till 90 degrees centigrade and left at this temperature for one hour with constant stirring. The mordanted sample is rinsed in water to remove superfluous mordant. The mordanted material is saturated in the dye bath. Dyeing is performed at 90 degrees centigrade for one hour with material liquor ratio 1 is to 40. Acidic pH of 4.5 is maintained. The dyed material is washed with 2 gram per litre non-ionic detergent at 60 degrees centigrade for 10 minutes, cold washed and dried. In post modernting process, dyeing is done at optimum condition and the dyed material is dipped in a modern bath followed by rinsing, soaping and drying. For silk, the procedure is same as wool except that the dyeing of silk at high temperature for long periods degrades the quality of silk, mainly it spoils the luster of silk. Hence, material is not heated in the dye bath. Next, let us see how lignocellulosic fibers are dyed. Like cotton fibers, double pre modernting process is best for lignocellulosic fibers. It is normally treated with tannin followed by mineral mordant like alum. Bleached and mordanted lignocellulosic fibers are dyed with natural dyes in alkaline pH that is around 10 at temperature of 85 to 90 degrees centigrade and with material liquor ratio 1 is to 20 for about 16 minutes. After dyeing, the material is washed. For improving the fastness property, the samples may be treated with cationic dye fixing agents. Synthetic fibers are dyed with natural dyes through high temperature, high pressure method with acidic pH with or without mordants. Mordants is used mainly to get a range of colors from the same dye. The dye used must be stable at high temperatures. In recent times, newer energy efficient dyeing processes like ultrasonic energized dyeing conditions Ultrasonic and sonicator assisted dyeing are adapted to natural dyes. Whenever we talk about dye, its color fastness properties must be given importance. What is this color fastness? Color fastness of dyed fabric denotes the resistance which the fabric possesses to change in its color characteristics or transfer of its color to adjacent white material when subjected to the action of various agents such as light, washing, rubbing, perspiration, dry cleaning, etc. Among all the types of fastness, light fastness, wet fastness and rubbing fastness is considered generally and perspiration fastness is important for apparels alone. The studies conducted by various researchers gave the following results. Light fastness of many natural dyes, especially those extracted from flower petals are found to be poor to medium. Most natural dyes have poor light stability compared to synthetic dyes. Both wash fastness and light fastness improve after modernting. Most yellow dyes have fastness grading equal to or less than good. Red, blue, brown and black vegetable dyes exhibit good to excellent light fastness. Yellow dyes obtained from plant materials are usually pale that is, the depth of the shade is low and so fading is quicker. The brighter yellow shades like turmeric is less fast to light. Mordants greatly influence fading of yellow dyes. 
use of thin alum mordants results in significantly more fading than chrome, iron and copper mordant. Red dyes are based on anthroquinone and are little affected by light. They are stable to light. Blue color is usually obtained from indigo. Its light fastness on wool is much higher than on cotton and 1 to 2 points higher than on silk. Brown and black dyes are obtained from plant sources rich in tannin, example pomegranate skin, myrobalan, etc. Tannins combined with ferrous sulfate to form complexes which give grey brown shades. Since the colors are deep and dark, light fastness is good. Black dye on wool with metallic mordants have very good fastness to light. Babul and Ketichu showed good light fastness. Light fastness of lac and turmeric varied from moderate to good on natural fibers. Light fastness of wool dyed with tea was good and it improved after modern tea. Hibiscus flower exhibited fair to good light fastness. Beetroot dye exhibited poor fastness to light on bamboo fabric. Gasana indica bark on cotton showed fair fastness to light. Color fastness of sample dyed with leaves, bark, bark, peel and fruit of jamun using babul bark as mordant showed good light fastness. While considering wash fastness, most natural dyes have only moderate wash fastness. The alkali present in washing detergent may also affect the dye. Wash properties of yellow dyes range from fair to excellent. Red dye is stable to washing. Blue dye, usually indigo, is applied in soluble form but once it's inside the fiber, it gets oxidized to insoluble form and so has excellent washing fastness. Tannins, black being complex high molecular weight, have good affinity for cellulosic and protein and has good fastness to washing. Lac dye on wool with metallic mordants have moderate to very good fastness to washing. Babul showed very good wash fastness while Ketichu wash fastness varied from good to very good. Wash fastness of black and turmeric varied from fair to moderate on natural fibers. Hibiscus flower showed fair to good wash fastness. Beetroot dye exhibited poor fastness to staining during washing and very poor fastness to washing on bamboo fabrics. Gasana indica bark showed fair fastness to washing on cotton. Color fastness of samples dyed with leaves, bark, bark peel and fruit of jamun using babul bark as mordant showed good wash fastness. Wash fastness of wool dyed with tea improved after modern tea. Rub fastness of most natural dyes have been found to be moderate to good. Lac dye on wool with metallic modern showed fair to good fastness to wet rubbing and good to very good fastness for dry rubbing. Beetroot dye exhibited good fastness to dry rubbing and fair fastness to wet rubbing on bamboo fabric. Gasana indica bark had excellent fastness to rubbing on cotton. This module has highlighted on the need for mordants, types of mordants and its effects on color, mordanting techniques compatible with natural dyes, dyeing process for various fibers and fastness properties of natural colorants. Natural color is a necessity for a sustainable future and moderns play an important role in natural coloring. Continuous research efforts are being carried out to improve the drawbacks like non-reproducibility and poor color fastness in natural time. Let us stick on to nature and make this earth a better place to live in.